Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Friday, August 13th, 2021, Friday the 13th, and we are live. Hope everybody's doing well. It's been a very, very busy day. I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered today for two hours also. So some of you all saw that. If you missed that, um, visit Roland Martin on Facebook or YouTube, and you can watch the um, entire show. Um, so we had a good show today. And on today's show, uh, what, what I'll do is on Sunday's show, since we're on for two hours on Sunday, I'll play some of the, uh, we'll share some of uh, uh, some excerpts from uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. Um, we had a um, infectious d- disease expert, an infectious disease doctor, Dr. Le- Alexia Gaffney, I think was her name, African-American female. And she was talking about uh, COVID-19 and the surge of COVID-19 and the Delta variant. So very, very informative segment. This spells a whole lot of myths, a whole lot of nonsense that you see on social media. Um, so I'm going to share, ask her some very important questions as well. So we'll share that segment on our Sunday show. All right. On today's show, there is a, I, I saw an article from uh, ebony.com ebony.com and then uh also one from uh deadline.com many people are familiar with the book blood brothers the book blood brothers about the relationship between the greatest of all time muhammad ali and malcolm x and the book blood brothers um came out a few years ago it's about randy roberts and johnny smith randy roberts and johnny smith and uh the book came out in i think it was 2016. well there's a new documentary uh that is going to be on netflix premiere september 9th on netflix uh called blood brothers and it's from uh kenya barris and Kenya Barris is the creator of Blackish on ABC, Blackish with Tracy Ellis Ross and Anthony Anderson. And uh, this new this new documentary uh, explores the relationship, the friendship between uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, and and how it came to uh, an abrupt end as well. We're going to talk some about the uh, documentary today, and. We'll talk some about Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X, uh, two of my heroes. You see the you see the pictures behind me of Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Uh, but also, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Attorney Benjamin Crump. Uh, Benjamin Crump is back in the news. There was a press release that he released on Thursday, August twelfth. You know, early in the week we talked about the story of the African American realtor uh, Eric Brown who was showing a home uh, to an African-American father and his 15-year-old son in Wyoming, Michigan. And a neighbor called uh, the police on, on, the, three, uh, on, the, uh, on the, the three individuals. They thought that someone who was arrested back on July 24th for breaking into the home, they thought that person returned. And these uh, two men and the teenage boy were arrested temporarily, then released. We know that story went viral. We talked about it here. It was also on CNN. Well, on Thursday, uh, August 12th, Attorney Benjamin Crump released a press release saying that he is representing real estate agent Eric Brown as well as the prospective buyer of the home. We'll talk about that a little bit, give you an update on that story. I'm going to play the interview that Don Lemon did with uh, Eric Brown and the uh, customer, um, Roy Thorne. And this incident took place on August 1st, 2021. All right. 
and I'm going to share with you the uh, I'm going to share with you the press release from uh, uh, Ben Crump's law firm. Also, very interesting uh, development there. So we'll, we'll discuss that. And then on yesterday's show, you know, I, I played we, we talked about how the state of Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger is trying to uh, is going to uh, purge one hundred eighty five thousand voters from the voter rolls in uh, Georgia. And uh, Joanne Reed on the readout uh, talked about that. And I meant to share with you. Uh, an excerpt. There's a commercial that's airing uh, bringing awareness to the For the People Act and encouraging people to call on President Biden to end the filibuster, even though President Biden can't end the filibuster. He can put pressure on the Senate. He can put pressure on Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Kristen Sinema, and Joe Manchin has shifted his stance on uh, Joe Manchin has shifted because he's he's called for the passing of the For the People Act. He just did that uh, Wednesday when they tried to take a vote on the For the People Act. He called for the passing of it in the Senate before they went on recess. And then also, as we talked about on yesterday's show, uh, Senator Joe Manchin and uh, Senator Raphael Warnock are working on a uh, revised uh, voting rights bill to get that passed when the Senate comes back from recess on September 13th. Okay. So uh, I think this is it, uh, July 28th. Uh, there was a, uh, well, th there was one, um, there, I think this may be it. Democrats craft revised voting rights bill seeking to keep hopes alive in the Senate. There's one article dealing with that from uh the washington post there's another one from the post also i have to pull up the second one from the post that uh if this is not the main one that i want i think this is it here uh democrats craft revised voting rights bill seeking to keep hopes alive in the senate this is from uh july 28th 2021 okay so you have this taking place uh also now in the commercial there is a excerpt of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talking about the filibuster. And I'm going to play an excerpt uh, of the actual video. OK. And he, he's talking about how the filibuster is used to uh, block civil rights bills and how it's uh, used by the minority to uh, a minority of misguided senators should no longer be able to weaponize the filibuster against voting rights for black and brown Americans. He, he's talking about how the filibuster was being used against African-Americans. Okay, and I meant to play that clip on yesterday's show, but we ran out of time, so we'll do that today. Um, and then also I'll give you a, a brief preview of the a uh, 10-week online course that I teach on Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. From the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. This is a 10-week online course that I teach, and we deal with history from the end of the Civil War through uh, the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Power Movement. So we'll talk uh, a little bit about uh, that class also. All right, I'll give you a preview of uh, information we cover in that class. And you can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, and uh, you can register for that 10-week online course uh, there, and we'll post a link here also. All right, now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct your own behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or a woman's thoughts, you control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can do or teach what it doesn't know. Now we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We deal with current events in history and politics, 
education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter. Also visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, to sign up for our email newsletter there as well all right and uh, you can register for uh my online courses at our website africanhistorynetwork.com i teach one on saturday one on sunday the one on sunday is uh, ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school that's a 10-week online course um also okay i want to go to this first uh story here uh before the break I just sent you the information also, Ed. Um, let's go to this first story here dealing with the documentary about uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, okay? Uh, the name of this documentary is uh, Blood Brothers. I, I saw an article from uh, Ebony.com because the movie... Uh, what there was a screening of it at the uh, Martha's Martha's Vineyard African American Festival, okay, um, earlier this week. That was on uh, Monday, August 9th. Okay, there was a screening of uh, the film there, and it's based on the uh, book that came out in 2016 called Blood Brothers, that deals with the uh, relationship, the friendship between. Uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and how it came to an abrupt end as well. Uh, Deadline.com has an article uh, on this also. If we flip over here, let's look at the article from Deadline.com. Uh, a documentary about the relationship between a documentary about the relationship between uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali from uh, Kenya Barris uh, of uh, Blackish uh, fame. Uh, Kenya Barris and his uh, Calibo Inc. Society has been set has been uh, set at Netflix. So it's going to premiere September 9th. OK, on Netflix. And I'm about to renew my Netflix subscription because there ain't really nothing on Netflix that I want to see. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll renew it for this. Blood Brothers, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. Blood Brothers, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali will launch on Netflix on September 9th. Now, it's based on the. Uh, book, book by Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith called Blood Brothers, The Fatal Friendship Between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Blood Brothers, The Fatal Friendship Between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Okay, that's the name of the book that uh, it is based upon. Now, just okay, so the documentary um comes from kenya barris and it's kenya barris has since moved to viacom cbs after uh he had a deal with netflix but he has since moved to viacom cbs in the deal that gives him equity in bet studios because we know bet so i guess still think bob johnson owned bet he does not uh he sold that some years ago to viacom viacom owns bet mtv and uh, VH1, by the way. Now, it is uh, Kenya Barris' uh, latest documentary for Netflix. He is also producing a documentary on civil rights attorney Benjamin Crump, who we're going to talk about in a few minutes here. So we see a connection here between Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Benjamin Crump, and Dr. King. They're all We're going to do it with all four of them in today's show. Uh, so the documentary, which Kenya Barris teased in his profile in 2020, features never before seen archival footage and the story behind the friendship between the uh, the civil rights leader, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Malcolm X, the civil rights leader, Malcolm X, human rights leader, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. Uh, Marcus A. Clark who has helmed uh, episodes of Netflix, uh, Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries, Rapture, uh, Unsolved Mysteries and Rapture directs 
uh, the documentary. So he's the director. Kenya Barris is the producer uh, of, of this documentary. Now, uh, Marcus A. Clark uh, talking about Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali are two of the most iconic and revered African Americans of the twentieth uh, of the twentieth century. And let me scroll this back up of the twentieth century. And yet, the depths of their friendship and the influence they had on each other is largely unknown. Blood Brothers provides a deeper understanding into what made these two men tick. What made these two men tick? Blood Brothers provides a deeper understanding into what made these two men tick. The intense role faith played in their bond and ultimately how their budding friendship came to an abrupt end. So, you know, this is something that I'm um, this is a documentary. I'm I'm looking forward to um, most of the documentaries on Malcolm X I have seen, including my favorite, which is uh, Make It Plain. I think Make It Plain is probably the, the best documentary so far that I've seen on Malcolm X. Uh, I know there's one coming out that his daughters are doing, so that may be better. Uh, it would be from a different perspective. But yeah, um, Make It Plain has um, uh, Dr. John Henrik Clark in the documentary because uh, Dr. Clark and Malcolm X were good friends also. Uh, we're going to pick this up on the other side of the break. We'll talk some more about this documentary that pre premieres September 9th. We'll talk some about Dr. King and we'll talk about the secret friendship between Dr. King and Muhammad Ali that a lot of people don't know about. I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to play an excerpt of a press conference that they held in uh, March of 1967. And then uh, we'll also talk about Benjamin Crump representing the African-American realtor who was arrested in Wyoming, uh, Michigan, just selling wild black. You listen to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the future radio on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. 910, the Superstation, Detroit's only African-American talk radio. <laughs> Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. It is Friday, August 13th, 2021, and we are live calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call-in number if you have a question or comment. All right. I uh, want to let you know that 910 AM Superstation has the Godfather's uh advertising package right now uh it is the greatest advertising deal ever with their godfather package you get 200 spots for 500 dollars with a must air within 30 day policy a must air within 30 day policy that is only two dollars and fifty cents per spot and they will even produce the spots for free that's right they will produce the spots for free call renisha williams right now at 313-434-8291 that's 313-434-8291 call renisha williams and let her know that uh, you, uh, Michael M. Hotep told you to call. All right. Uh, I want to go back to this story here we were talking about before the break. Uh, this deals with the new documentary uh, coming from uh, producer Kenya Barris, who's the creator of uh, Blackish on ABC with Tracy Ellis Ross and uh, Anthony Anderson. Uh, and this documentary deals with the relationship between Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. OK, it's based upon the book called Blood Brothers uh, and Blood Brothers came out in 2016. And. The um, name of this documentary is Blood Brothers, the fatal friendship between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Blood Brothers, the fatal friendship between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. Now, there was a uh, there was an article from uh, Ebony. There's an article from uh, Ebony.com, Ebony Magazine, also dealing with this. This, this movie premiered on uh, Monday, August 9th at the uh, Martha Vineyards uh, African-American Festival. 
okay? The Martha Vineyard's African American Festival. So check out this article also from um, Ebony.com. Blood Brothers Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X debuts at the Martha's Vineyard African American Festival. This article is from August 12, 2021, and this uh, documentary premieres September 9th on uh, Netflix. Okay, so I'll be looking forward to that, and we'll talk about that on this show also once... Uh, it's released and and i'll watch it all right now there's a uh oh back in 2016 there was a uh article about uh blood brothers about the book blood brothers from uh this is from nbc news okay uh let's see if we can pull this up here uh, this is from NBC News. Bl uh, Blood Brothers, the fatal friendship between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. And I'm going to uh, pull this up. This is another article you can read. I, I, I read articles about this book when it came out. I haven't had a chance to read the book yet. But uh, I did read articles about the book when it came out. Now, one of the, one of the criticisms of the movie Malcolm X is that it did not deal with the uh, relationship between uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, okay? That it was that was not uh, depicted in the movie Malcolm X. And I know the movie was long; it was like three hours, was it three hours, something like that. I mean, when they show it on uh, when they show the movie on BET, her it's like fifteen hours because they have so many commercials on BET, her, but. Um, that was one of the criticisms of uh, the movie Malcolm X, that the relationship between uh, Malcolm and Muhammad Ali was not depicted, which is which is very important, has, has a really big uh, historical significance. Let me try to pull this one up here from NBC. OK, so here's another article to read. Now, this one came out in 2016. And this article was about the uh, book, came out May 19th, 2016, which uh, most people know is Malcolm X's birthday. Uh, Blood Brothers, the fatal friendship between Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, the history surrounding Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X's complex bond. And this is the, the uh, actual cover uh, of the book. Let's pull this up here. This is the actual cover of the book. It's by Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith. All right. So um, in the beginning of the article, it says in Blood Brothers, Randy Roberts and Johnny Smith lift the curtain on the provocative history surrounding uh, Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X's complex, complex bond, deeply examined examined and enthrallingly written the authors explore how both legacies involvement in the realms of race politics and religion have coalesced to transform the world since the raging 1960s published by basic books the narrative is titled blood brothers the fatal friendship between muhammad ali and malcolm x then they have an excerpt from um the book also all right so read this article as well um an excerpt from the book talks about the first time that uh cassius clay at then cassius clay met malcolm x and remember when uh uh cassius clay was training for his fight with sonny liston february 25th 1964 uh, he invited malcolm x to bring his family to his training camp to Muhammad Ali's training camp. Okay. And Malcolm told Betty it's going to be like a vacation. Okay. Uh, or like a honeymoon, something like that. So Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali said, my first impression of Malcolm X was how could a black man talk about the government and white people and act so bold and not be shot at? How could he say these things? 
only God must be only God must be protecting him. Clay said later, Malcolm was unlike anyone he had ever met. Quote, he was fearless. That really attracted me, end quote. Malcolm had magnetized Cassius Clay, drawing him toward the inner circle of the nation of Islam. He had no idea the effect he had on the young boxer that day in Detroit, but he would soon see him again. He would soon see him again. OK, so read. Uh, check this article out here and let's connect back to the uh, lost our connection to the radio station. Just a second here. Skype Skype dropped the call. Let's connect back. All right. Okay, so uh read this article here. Blood Brothers, the fatal friendship between Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. All right, we lost connection. I'm back. Okay. All right, so read this article here from NBC News. Blood Brothers. Blood blood brothers the fatal friendship between muhammad ali and malcolm x uh this is from bc.com all right now there was also a relationship between um dr king and malcolm x uh, dr king and uh muhammad ali there's also a relationship between dr king and muhammad ali well we know dr king and malcolm x met once uh, that was march 26 1964. the when Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay fights Sonny Liston, February 1964, it's going to be the next month that uh, Malcolm X officially separates from the nation of Islam. Malcolm X officially separates from the nation of Islam um, March 8th, 1964. Okay, March 8th, 1964. It's going to be later in that month that Malcolm X meets Dr. King for the first and only time. That was March uh, 26, 1964, at the U.S. Senate debate for the Civil Rights Act, okay, of 1964. Uh, Malcolm goes there. And then March 29, 1964, Malcolm delivers the, the speech, the ballot, or the bullet in Washington Heights, New York. That's March 29th, 1964. He's going to deliver the speech again, April 3rd, 1964 in Cleveland, Ohio. And he's going to deliver it again, April 4th, 1964 in Detroit, Michigan at King Solomon Baptist Church. Okay. So he, he delivers the ballot of the bullet March 29th, 1964. Okay. Three days after he meets Dr. King, he delivers it April 3rd and then April 4th, 1964. Um, there was a secret friendship between Dr. King and Muhammad Ali. In March of 1967, now Malcolm is already assassinated. Malcolm, Malcolm was assassinated February 21st, 1965. In March of 67, uh, Dr. King and Muhammad Ali have a press conference. They have a meeting then they have a press conference, a brief press conference uh, about the meeting. OK, we're going to go to clip. Uh, we're going to go to clip one, uh, Ed. And they talk about their opposition to Vietnam. Now, it's going to be we're going to we're going to go to clip number one from YouTube. Heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali got together with civil rights. OK, hold on. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Stop the clip. Hold on. Hold on. Just pause the clip. Just pause. Just start from the beginning. Just pause the clip. I'll introduce it. Um, this is the month before they officially come out in opposition to the Vietnam War. Now, it's going to be April 4th. That, now, th this clip is from is late March 1967. It's going to be April 4th, 1967, that Dr. King delivers his speech beyond Vietnam, where he officially comes out in opposition to the Vietnam War and gives a speech about it. It's going to be late in April 67 that Muhammad Ali is going to be 
re, he's going to refuse to be drafted into the army. He refuses to take the step forward and be drafted in the army, as we see dramatized in um, the uh, movie The Greatest, where Muhammad Ali plays himself. OK, so in March of 1967, these are probably the two most recognizable uh, African-American men in, in, in the country. Dr. King and Muhammad Ali. All right, let's go to this clip. Okay, take it off mute. What did you discuss back in the hotel room? Nothing, just friends, just like cooch up and and uh, Kennedy and everybody, when the people, all of the politicians of all other white races come together, and they, although they believe different, they think different, whites can come together and discuss the common cause. But whenever a few of us come together, the world is shook up. And I say, whatever went back there is our business. Reverend King, you agree? Oh, yes, yes. We had a very good discussion uh, on uh, many matters. And, of course, these are not things that we would discuss here. But uh, we do have common problems and common concerns. And above all, as uh, Muhammad Ali has just said, uh, we are all victims of the same system of oppression. And even though we may have different religious uh, beliefs, uh, this does not at all bring about a difference in Still terms brothers. of our concerns. Still brothers. You share the same, one more question. Do you share the same concern uh, that uh, Muhammad has for his draft status? Oh, I certainly do. Uh, you know, my, my views on the draft are very clear. I'm against it. And I think the sooner our country does away with the draft, the better it will be for everybody. I'm dis very disturbed about the militaristic posture of our nation. And I think until we have a radical reordering of priorities in our country, uh, we're going more and more to the depths and, I should say, to the doom that follows arrogance of power, Senator Fulbright said. Okay. All right. So that is uh, from uh, March 1967. That is um, Dr. King and Muhammad Ali at a press conference talking about the meeting that they had. And there's a point in there where Dr. King talks about the differences that they had. And Muhammad Ali says, but we, we're st still brothers. Muhammad minister in the nation of Islam. Dr. King is a black Baptist minister. And there, there's, 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 a, there's a sermon that Dr. King gives when um, Muhammad Ali refuses to be drafted. And it's on YouTube. Uh, there's an excerpt of it on YouTube where uh, Dr. King says, uh, you have to admire uh, Muhammad Ali's courage. You, you may disagree with some of his religious beliefs, things like this, but you have to admire his courage. OK, not to be not to be drafted. So here you have a press conference. Uh, with the two most probably the two most well-known African-American men in the country at the time in 1967. And then that's March 1967 that they give this press conference. Then the. Next month, April of 1967, they both officially come out in opposition to the Vietnam War. And this gives a huge boost to uh, the uh, anti-war movement and the anti-war activists and, and African-Americans and, and, and white college students and things like this who, who are protesting against the war. And also, um, Dr. King becomes the most hated man in America overnight. He becomes the most hated man in America when he comes out in opposition to the uh, Vietnam War. OK, so that 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 press conference, that was from March 30th, 1967. OK, March 30th, 1967. That's on YouTube. Heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali uh, got together with civil rights leader uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, that's uh, courtesy Associated Press. All right. Now, there's an article from Biography.com that I've talked about before on this show. Joe. Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali's surprising secret friendship. Uh, this is from biography.com. Very good article. 
by Aaron uh, Blakemore from originally January 4th, January 14th, 2019, updated January 29th, 2021. Martin Luther King Jr. and Muhammad Ali's surprising secret friendship. And here you have Muhammad Ali and Dr. King, and Muhammad Ali saying that we're still brothers, even though we have differences. And this goes back, reminds me of uh, Malcolm X in July of 1963, the month before the March on Washington, when Malcolm X sends a letter to the leading civil rights leaders, the big six civil rights leaders, including Dr. King, requesting a meeting with all of them, including Dr. King. And, and Malcolm was calling for a unification of the civil uh, of the civil rights leaders and their following uh, and their followers while Malcolm was still in the nation of Islam. This is July 1963. And Malcolm said we have to find a common solution to a common problem posed by a common enemy. Here you here you have uh, Muhammad Ali in the interview we just played. Muhammad Ali is talking about uh, Kennedy meeting with Nikita Khrushchev, uh, leader of the USSR. And if we go back to 63, Malcolm X said that if Kennedy and Khrushchev could put aside their major differences and have a meeting, then African-American leaders, Negro leaders, should be able to put aside their minor differences and come together and have a meeting. And he said, we have to find a common solution to a common problem posed by a common enemy. There, there was an article by, um, I think this was Deneen L. Brown um, for the Washington Post. And this one here is uh, Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, uh, met Martin Luther King Jr. met Malcolm X just once. The photo still haunts us with what was lost. The photo still haunts us with what, with what was lost. We're going to go to clip two in just a second here. Uh, Dr. King, we'll go, go, go to clip two in just a second here. If, if you read this article from the Washington Post, and I deal with this in a lot of my lectures dealing with uh, Dr. King and uh, Malcolm X and things like this, uh, we'll, and we'll talk about some of this in the 10 week online course that I teach also from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power, 1865 to 1968. When Dr. King, when Malcolm meets Dr. King, Dr. King meets Malcolm X. Malcolm tells Dr. King, I'm throwing myself into the heart of the civil rights struggle. I'm throwing myself into the heart of the civil rights struggle. This is March 26, 1964. This is at the U.S. Senate debate for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Malcolm has already officially left the Nation of Islam. He officially separated from the Nation of Islam March 8, 1964, after having been silenced for a comment uh, President Kennedy after Kennedy was assassinated in November 1963. See, a lot of people, see, the, uh, the crucial, crucial period of time of Malcolm's life is when he needs to, leaves the Nation of Islam. And March 26th, now this is before Malcolm goes on his hajj to Mecca. That's late April and May 64. He goes on his hajj to Mecca. Then June 28th, 1964, Malcolm delivers his speech that people call the by enemies necessary speech. But he's he's announcing the formation of the uh, organization of Afro-American unity. And he's lay, laying out the platform of the organization of Afro-American unity. OK, that's June 28th, 1964. He lays out the political platform, economic platform. He talks about voting. He talks about registering people to vote as independents as well. He's talking about not voting for a party, but voting for policies. He, and he says we need to register African. We, we need to register black people in uh, Harlem, register them as independents. That's in the speech. OK, when, when I hear people talk about Malcolm, I, they don't a lot of times they don't talk about that. This is why we got to study Malcolm. Also, not just when he's in the nation of Islam, but also after he leaves the nation of Islam. So Malcolm joins the civil rights movement. He goes down to um, Mississippi and uh, it was either, he goes to Alabama because Dr. King's in jail in Alabama. He goes to Alabama in 65, early 65. He goes to speak to uh, SNCC also. OK. And he go, um, um, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer invites him uh, uh, to come uh, speak to SNCC. He goes to speak to SNCC. When, when you 
when Malcolm leads the nation to Islam, and it, as a matter of fact, if you read the if you actually read the speech, uh, Ballad of the Bullet, especially the one from March 29th, 1964, Malcolm is talking about injecting black nationalism into the civil rights movement. That's one of the major themes of the speech. I hear people talk about the speech. I, I find it interesting they don't mention that. When you actually read the speech, like, for instance, you can read these. Uh, where my books on Malcolm? We've got. Uh, we've got uh, February 1965, the final speeches. Malcolm X. These are the final speeches Malcolm X gave. So we have this book here. Malcolm X, the final speeches. It's like the last three weeks of his life. This is Dr. King's first book. But Dr. King wrote five books. This is his first book, Stride Toward Freedom. It's about the history of the Montgomery bus boycott. This is his first book. came out in 1958. That's when he got stabbed by a Zola Ware uh, Curry, the, the crazed uh, black woman that stabbed him in the chest with a letter opener, and he almost died. That was in 1958. He was doing a book signing of this book, his first book, when he got stabbed when he got stabbed then uh, so you, you got that one this one here about Malcolm speeches and then we have uh, the other one Malcolm X speaks and it's around here somewhere I have to find this uh, uh, it's a really good book that has a lot of Malcolm speeches in it from 64 and 65 so and it has the ballad of the bullet. Now, the version of the ballad of the bullet that it has in there is from uh, April 3rd, 64 in Cleveland, Ohio. And let me see. This one right here. Malcolm X Speaks. Edited with prefatory notes by George Brightman. All right. There are excerpts of the ballad of the bullet online also that you can watch. In, in the speech from March 29th, 1964, and it's on YouTube. Malcolm uses the term African-American because contrary to popular belief, Jesse Jackson did not create the term African-American. I don't know why people think that that's historically inaccurate. We were using the term African-American in 1960 in, in the 1960s. Not only did Malcolm use it in the speech, but when you actually when you actually read the text of the speech, like in this book here, he's using the term African-American in the speech. Why people think Jesse Jackson created that in 88 or 89? No, he reintroduced the term because the term African-American, the first recorded usage goes back to um, May 15, 1782 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's the either New York Times or Washington Post has articles dealing with that. But I, I want to go to this clip here. This is uh, Dr. King talking about the uh, filibuster and how the filibuster has uh, been used against uh, African Americans and, and, and the civil rights movement. Let's go to uh, clip two. This is Dr. King on the filibuster. Take it off mute. If the president's program were incorporated or such portions of it would lend themselves to this, how would you feel about submitting this to a vote of the people of the United States who have never really had an opportunity to express themselves in this area? Well, this will certainly be all right with me because I think the vast majority of people in the United States would vote favorably for such a bill. I think the tragedy is that uh, we have a Congress uh, with a Senate that has a minority of misguided senators who will use the filibuster to keep the majority of people from even voting. They won't let the majority of senators vote. And certainly they wouldn't want the majority of people to vote because they know they do not represent the majority of the American people. In fact, they represent in their own states a very small minority. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that is from... Uh, that's... Uh a clip of uh, Dr. King that's from I think 1963 and that's on Facebook also um, that clip we'll post the link of it here Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the filibuster 
a minority of misguided senators should no longer be able to uh, weaponize the filibuster against voting rights for black and brown Americans. Um, so we'll shift gears here. We have this story from uh, the hill.com uh, update to a story we talked about uh, early in the week about the um, let's go to clip three. Let's go to clip three from CNN about uh, the realtor who was arrested along with his client. Now, um, Benjamin Crump is going to represent the uh, realtor. Let's go to uh, clip three from uh, CNN and Don Lemon. OK, we'll go to that in just a second. So imagine touring a home up for sale and being met by police with guns drawn. It happened on Sunday in Michigan to a black realtor and his black client and the client's 15 year old son, who's seen here on police body cam video being put into handcuffs. All three were cuffed. Now, they say if they were white, it wouldn't have happened. Police say a white neighbor called 911 reporting a break in after seeing the three men at the vacant home. This is dash cam video. It shows one of them leaving the house with his hands up. It turns out a different man was arrested at the home a week earlier for unlawful entry. The Wyoming, Michigan police are saying tonight in a statement, after a thorough internal review of the actions of each of our public safety officers who responded to this incident, we have concluded race played no role in our officers' treatment of the individuals who were briefly detained and our officers responded appropriately. While it is unfortunate that innocent individuals were placed in handcuffs, our officers responded reasonably and according to department policy based on the information available to them at the time. Well, let's talk about this. Joining me now with their perspective, with their perspective, the prospective home buyer, Roy Thorne, his son Samuel, uh, Eric Brown, the realtor, showing the home. Thank you all for joining. I appreciate you joining. I'm sorry this happened to you. Let's discuss. Eric, um, you heard what the police said. What did this feel like for you? Did it feel like profiling, racial profiling? It, it did. Um, honestly, it did. In that, in that moment, it certainly felt that way. Um, it's difficult to justify that type of um, what I felt a, a tactical uh, type response. There was a, a strategy there, and then they were surrounding the home uh, without, without, without our knowledge. And, and, and we, we weren't made aware of the presence. So, yeah, for, for sure, it felt... Um, I don't, I don't feel like um, a home that had been on the market for this length of time uh, with the number of showings, given the, the climate and activity in our market, that no one else, no one else had the, the, um, that type of or level of force or response um, respond. Mm, yeah. Look, Roy, I'm, I'm glad you're here and you're healthy now, but you had to be worried that, you know, it wouldn't be the case while this was all happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was worried. Um, I was very worried uh, initially when it was uh, when it all started. Um, you know, not knowing that they the officers were out there until I saw um, so I saw two officers outside the window on the side of the home after Sandy told me that the cops outside we were downstairs and came upstairs where Eric and I were. And um, once I saw the two officers with their guns drawn, um, and I saw them doing uh, hand signals, um, signaling each other um, just around the house. And I noticed that, and one officer was heading to the back. And that's when I really got paranoid because I knew once they surrounded the home, they were just preparing for a standoff. And so my instincts told me, we need to get out of here. We need to get to um, where they can see that we're not a threat. All right, pause and, it right um, there. Pause it right there. Okay, yeah, so we know they were arrested that, uh, uh, for, for about for a short period of time, about ten minutes or so, about ten minutes or so, as the videotape uh, showed, right about that amount of time. Now, uh, update to the story: The Hill dot com has an article here from August twelfth, Thursday, August twelfth, uh, twenty twenty one. Ben Crump representing black realtor, prospective buyer handcuffed at home showing. Okay, this is at uh, uh, the Hill dot com. And there is a uh, press release here. Uh, I, I went to uh, Ben Crump's. So I follow him on uh, Twitter. There's a press release that he released on uh, August 12th. Um, and, okay, those watching on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network and our YouTube channel, keep watching. We're, we're going to keep going for a couple more minutes. We'll talk about this press release. Uh, visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com. 
uh, you can register for the online courses I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, we'll be back uh, uh, Sunday uh, night. Right now, it's correct. Wrong behavior is not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. All right. Stand by. All right. Um, everybody, be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, and uh, register for the uh, class I teach on Saturdays from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. It's a 10 week online course and we deal with history from the, uh, at the end of the Civil War, Reconstruction, 1865 to 1877, Jim Crow era, uh, World War One, World War II, uh, Civil Rights Movement, Black Power Movement. Uh, we do the class live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it over and over again. Click on register here. It takes you to the next page and just click on uh, enroll uh, at the next page on the next page. And uh, you can register for the course. It's regularly $130 on sale, $80. As soon as you uh, register, you can start watching content. You can watch the class from uh, last week. And we have some bonus content there also. Okay. Uh, so just click on enroll. All right. Uh, let's continue here. So looking at the uh, press release uh, from Ben Crump's uh, law firm, um, this is from this was released thursday august 12th I can't pull this up at all all right uh nationally so this is regarding wyoming michigan nationally renowned civil rights and personal injury uh attorney uh ben crump has been retained by eric brown and roy thorne two men who were wrongfully detained and handcuffed by the wyoming uh police department during a house showing wyoming police officers swarmed a home and detained and handcuffed brown who, who was a realtor eric brown his uh client uh thorn and his uh 15 year old son during a showing and let me see if i can i think we have let's see can we blow this up uh, some more let's look at this here i saved the press release let's flip over Try to bring it up this way and zoom in on it. Okay. All right. Okay, let's look at it this way. Okay, so um, a, a neighbor called 911 and said that they fit the description of someone who had broken into a home in the neighborhood. Attorney Crump has issued the following statement, quote, these men and this child are completely traumatized by this incident with the Wyoming Police Department, What should have been a great day for this father and son and another day at work for Eric, the realtor, turned into a day of terror that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. And why? Because of yet another incident of racial profiling. In America, you can't walk while black, drive while black, sleep while black, or even work while black. A black man shouldn't fear for his life every time he goes to work. I won't stop until these men and this child receive the justice they deserve, end quote. Now, according to the reporting from the uh, Hill.com, even though he is representing the realtor and the customer roy thorne the prospective home buyer is it hasn't been determined yet and i've looked at different sources with this it hasn't been determined yet that they're going to file a lawsuit they are contemplating the lawsuit but they have retained legal counsel all right so check out this article here from uh the hill.com ben crump representing black realtor prospective buyer handcuffed at home uh handcuffed at home uh during showing and i just want to make sure i got everything i wanted to talk about all my notes here on this article okay we got that 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 now the police department uh said and we talked about this earlier in the week when we discussed this topic the police department said that 
uh they did an investigation go down to the bottom of the article here we'll look at the statement from the police department um the local police department the wyoming police department uh said in in an initial statement that the officers were responding to a report from a caller who believed that a suspect who was arrested for a july 24th intrusion on the property had returned to the house so this incident took place august 1st there was an intruder in the house july 24th who was arrested the caller who called 911 who was asked by the homeowner to keep an eye on the house thought the person who was the intruder on july 24th had returned and according to the dispatch call, the caller also uh, uh, also recognized the car. As I said before, early in the week, did you write down the license plate number? Was it the same license plate number? Apparently, it was not the same car. Maybe it was the same make and model, but it wasn't the same car. These were different people. Now, police added that the three individuals were placed in handcuffs under the under quote unquote department protocol on. Um, on Tuesday, August 10th, the city's Department of Public Safety said that an internal that an internal review of the incident, an internal review of the incident showed that quote officers responded appropriately end quote and quote according to department policy based on the information available to them at the time end quote. The statement went on to say, we have concluded that race played no role in our officer's treatment of the individuals who were briefly detained, uh, end quote, the, the statement uh, said. All right. So you can read this article in its entirety. We'll see what happens with this case here. Now, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. This helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting. Uh, we're here six days a week. Okay. And uh, this helps us um, stay on the air, finance the show. Uh, pay some of the bills, etc. Uh, we're here Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to uh, midnight Eastern Standard Time, and uh, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we rebroadcast these shows um, throughout the day on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. These shows are also an audio podcast format as well. So wherever you get your audio podcast from, search for the African History Network show. We're on iHeartRadio, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, CastBox, FM Player, TuneIn. Uh, download the iHeartRadio app. Search for the African History Network show. Search for the African History Network show. The African History Network show. They have about 300 of our podcasts there. This is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. When you go there... Yeah, to show my name, Michael, and to show my picture. These other ones are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. That's not that's not us. I've already reported them to uh, Cash App. And uh, at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, you can, uh, when you scroll down the page, it has information for the radio show. Click right here to listen to podcasts. It takes you to our blog talk radio show where we have about a thousand podcasts there of the show also, going back to 2010. All right. And then uh, you can also register for the online courses I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, Saturday is from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. That's 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do the classes live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch them over and over again. You also have access to the class even after the course is over with. So next year, you can still go back and watch the full uh, course. And then the other class I teach is on Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach in the school we do a thousands of years of history and what led up to the transatlantic slave trade taking this uh as well all right look we have to get out of here remember at the african history network we focus on educating empowering 
and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct for own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. Uh, we're 